Well, hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of Road to Rib Town, a series documenting my attempts to learn all there is to know about cooking ribs. Today's episode was shot in June and comes to you from the shores of Holden Beach, North Carolina. For this cook, I'll be trying out some products from Blues Hog, their rub, and their signature barbecue sauce. Now, if you're not familiar with this company, you ought to know that Blues Hog barbecue sauce is probably one of the most commonly used sauces in the competition circuit. Unfortunately, I chose the worst day possible at our week at the beach to film this episode, so bear with me. Alright, so today I decided to set up my Weber Smoky Mountain by using a modified version of the Minion Method. Now, if you're not sure what the Minion Method is, it's, well, just putting lit coals on top of unlit coals. It's not really rocket science. Supposedly, the idea was created by a guy named Jim Minion, who set up his WSM this way for long cooks when he was catering. The method that I use is a modified version of that. Now, for years, I thought it was the Minion Method, but according to AmazingRibs.com, it's called Sue's Donut. Named after its creator, Harry Sue, a well-known barbecue competitor. Now, I don't know if Harry was the real originator of this, but who cares? It works. All it involves is putting an object in the center of the grate and filling the basket with unlit coals and a few chunks of wood. Once the object in the center is removed, you're left with a hole dumped up in your lit coals. This allows the coals to slowly burn outward, keeping your temp steady and consistent, all the while providing a longer burn time. Now, if I had filled the basket, the charcoal basket that is, all the way to the brim, I could probably get about 8 hours of slow and low burn time using this method. And on a 22 WSM, from what I hear, you can get about 10 or 12 hours, which is really sweet for those long overnight cooks. Alright, so today I'm cooking three racks of loin back or baby back ribs, and the ribs in the back have been prepared just like they have been in episodes 4, 5, and 6, dry brined and now seasoned with Memphis dust rub. The other two have not been dry brined, that's because I'm applying Blues Hog rub to them. And Blues Hog, like most store bought rubs, contains salt. And from what I've read, dry brining and adding a rub with salt will, as you might expect, make your meat too salty and not pleasant to eat. So now the WSM is settled in around 235 degrees, it's time to get those ribs on. Now although the WSM does have two cooking grates, I've chosen not to use the lower one. Frankly, it's just cumbersome to get to during cooks, and moving the upper grate with food on it might mean dripping grease on the concrete patio of the house we are renting, and I really don't want to lose my safety deposit, so I'm just going to use a rib rack. That way all three racks can fit neatly on the upper grate. Alright, so it's been about an hour since I put the ribs on, and just like in the past few videos, I'm going to baste or spray the ribs every hour until they're nearly done. Today I brought my industrial spray bottle, and in it is a solution of three parts apple juice to one part apple cider vinegar. The two racks up front here that I'm going to move to the back are the ones with Blues Hog Rub, and you can see that they have a nicer color than the other one with Memphis Dust, so that's at least one point in the positive for Blues Hog. Alright, so hour number two, I'm going to spray the ribs down again and rotate them within the rack. Alright, so here we are after three hours, and I decided to check the temperature of these ribs. The two up front here are in the mid-170s, and the one in the back is around 183. Now, the reason why the two up front are cooking a little slower is because they have more loin meat than the one in the back. The difference between the two just comes down to how the butcher cut them. It's not a big deal, but with extra meat comes extra time. And to speed things up, so I can try to get all three racks done around the same time, I decided to wrap the larger ones in foil with a little parquet and honey. And I would have used some brown sugar as well, but I forgot to bring it with me. And just so the uh, ribs don't leak all over the porch and everywhere else when I pull them off the smoker, I'm going to double wrap them as well. It also helps to keep the heat inside better uh, during this process. Alright, so obviously I'm putting the uh, wrapped ribs back on the smoker, and I'm going to spray the unwrapped one down with that solution in the spray bottle. And I could have rotated that rack, uh, but I just, I didn't. My thought process here is to put these wrapped ribs on for maybe about an hour, 45 minutes. I feel like any more than that, they would have been mush. Alright, hour four has arrived, and our pit temps are still running steady. A check of the unwrapped ribs shows that they are done. And I know this because they're not only cracking, but they're breaking as well. And there's definite signs of pullback from the bone, too. A check of the internal temperatures in the wrapped ribs shows them to be around the low 190s. So they're ready to come off the smoker, out of the foil, and be put back on where they'll tighten up and finish cooking. With all three racks lying flat in the upper grate, you can easily see that the one on the left, without the extra loin meat, is done. Really done. So it's time to sauce them with our Blues Hog barbecue sauce. And man, is this sauce super glossy. Like, it's hard to tell without natural sunlight, but if we were out from under the house and the sun was shining, you'd certainly see what I mean. 
My guess is that there's quite a bit of cane syrup in this sauce. Tom's Test Kitchen did a video on a clone of Blue's Hogs Tennessee Red Sauce, another barbecue sauce used in competition. And in his recipe, he figured that there was a good amount of cane syrup. So I can only imagine that the original sauce has it as well, if not more. And I'll try to leave an iCard up here for the video if I can figure out how to do that. And uh, anyways, now the sauce is on here, I'm going to let it set for about 15 or 20 minutes, and we'll check back then. Alright, the sauce is set, and because the other ribs are not done yet, I'm going to bring these in the house, wrap them in foil, put them in a dry cooler where they'll stay warm. So a check of the remaining ribs using the bend break test shows that this one here is not bending as far as I'd like it to, and it's not cracking or splitting. There is significant pullback on the bone, uh, so that's a good sign there. This one here is bending a little bit further. There is some cracking and splitting on the outer flesh and some pullback as well. Uh, without clear indications on the one on the right, I decided to leave them both on there for another 20 minutes or so. After that period of time, another check on the ribs shows that they are more flexible and are now cracking. And a check of the internal temps of these ribs shows them to average around the mid 190s. What's interesting here is that both the ribs now have the same color. So points that Blues Hog had for its rub color, I think they lost. Anyways, time to sauce these ribs. The one on the left here again using some Blues Hog. And the right, we're going to use some 12 Bones Blueberry Chipotle Barbecue Sauce. After about 20 minutes or so, which is just long enough for that barbecue sauce to set, time to get them off the smoker and bring them in the house. Alright, so here's a look at the two racks of ribs in the best sunlight I could find, which was none. And uh, you can see that the ones on top, which are the Blues Hog, are a little bit glossier than the uh, 12 Bones. So let's bring them in the house, cut them up, and see how they taste. All right, so here's the rack of ribs that I applied the 12 Bones Blueberry Chipotle Barbecue Sauce to. I'm going to cut into them real quickly and uh, take a look at this rib, take a bite, see how it, see how it is. Um, it's not a clean cut. These knives and this rental property stink, and that's pretty typical. I really love the flavor profile of this Blueberry Chipotle Barbecue Sauce. It just gives a nice sweet uh, and heat balance. And uh, anyways, the, the rib is good, man. It's tender, and it leaves a bite mark. Well done, John. Okay, so let's look at the first rack of ribs that I pulled up the smoker. And to recap, they were sauced with Blue's Hog, wrapped in foil, and put in a dry cooler while the others finished. And I have to tell you, I have not allowed ribs to rest like this before, so I really didn't know what to expect. Once unwrapped, though, the ribs were definitely hot, which was great. No one was going to be eating cold ribs for supper. Now, here's a look at one of them. And again, this lousy knife really kills the presentation, and I won't make that mistake again. At least I can say, though, that they have a nice glossy appearance, light smoke ring, and smell great. But I wonder if resting in foil may have continued to render them down more. Now, I don't know because they were a bit overdone in the first place, so I guess I can't call it one way or the other. But you can see what I mean, though, when this bone comes clean out. I guess it just means that I have some more research to do. Anyway, the taste of the meat here with the Blues Hog on it, I can tell you it's definitely sweeter than your average sauce. It's good. A little too sweet, though, for my liking. But I can tell you it's now my wife's favorite, and my mother-in-law really enjoyed it, too. So you know that's good. My final opinion is this, I think Blue's Hog is good, but it's best used when added to another sauce. And that's exactly how a lot of barbecue competitors use it. It's glossy and sweet, but it lacks some heat and depth. So try adding it to your favorite sauce, and I think you'll be pleased. I tried it with mine, and I can tell you, it was certainly a winner. Well, it's time for me to enjoy these ribs with my family, a nice glass of red wine. So, I hope you join me next time on the Road to Rib Town, where I make mistakes so you don't have to. Thanks for watching, y'all.